Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and thanks for stopping by again. Now, comments are occasionally uh, included here at the YouTube channel, or they're submitted. They're all read first and approved before they go up. Some of them are angry, and they have a viewpoint that is meant to provoke anger or argument or whatever. Those go. Uh, those don't show up. I, I have no time for that. That's not the purpose for this channel. There are plenty of others where you can do it. Uh, others bring up major questions that have to do with the future, with a global situation, with a crisis that's coming down the road or whatever, and that lead to long, drawn-out discussions of that. But that's not what this is about either. Now, one of those, though, it comes up with a, an issue that I'm going to look at, but I'll look at it from the perspective of Panama in a way I, I hope is relevant to uh, your concerns, too. And that is that of debt. The gentleman involved is concerned about a debt crisis coming in time you know, soon and all that. That is another issue for somewhere else. But we do have uh, a sense here of what happens in Panama during term times of grave financial crisis. And the big one, of course, for most of us was 2009. And the global financial crisis was a crusher. It had to do with a lot of different factors, but it was really set off and got rolling by a housing uh, bubble that exploded up in the U.S. Now, down here in Panama, the way in which they've dealt with uh, uh, mortgage lending and so forth basically was based on what was true in North America in decades past. It was in the United States in the early part of this century where those standard rules and regulations, a way of doing business, was set aside, and people were getting uh, too deeply into debt and mortgages they should not have gotten. It was made simply too easy for them to, to get money, and we paid a price for that. I'm just going to leave it at that because you can go on for an hour talking about that particular crisis. I think we all lived through it, and I suspect some of you had, were hurt very seriously by it because a lot of people were. And it wasn't just Americans. It spread. It turned out that Spain, Ireland, there were other places that had the similar problem. And then many countries where people had invested in, in purchasing securities based on mortgages that turned out to be lousy mortgages, and they lost value in their securities. It was a royal mess, and the whole world teetered here on, on the verge of a real breakdown. Uh, in the Western Hemisphere during that period, most of the countries here, almost all of them, uh, booked negative numbers in their growth for that year in 2009, including the U.S. and Canada, but right up and down the, the, uh, uh, the, the Americas. We did the best of anybody. We had a 4 percent increase. Uh, it was why did we come through that so well? You see, before it happened, we had so many people who were insisting that as it was beginning to show up, that exactly what went on in the U.S. would happen in Panama. But the point is, is that we do, or I should say the banking industry here, follow the rule book as written by Americans in past decades, not the one that had been adopted over the early years of this last decade. Uh, and the difference is dramatic. We have – the mortgage situation was radically different. Most importantly, as far as expats were concerned, the ones coming down at that time, the, the predominant groups were Americans and Canadians, that is for those outside of Latin America. Latin Americans are the majority of the expatriate population, and they're from all over Latin America. But other than Latin Americans, uh, Americans and Canadians were really overwhelmingly predominant. Nowadays, we have plenty of Europeans coming in. Things are getting much, much uh, more varied. Now, those who came down, though, had sold their homes during the bubble in the U.S., had received a lot more money than they had anticipated they were going to get a few years earlier, and they came down here. This market was really just opening up, and they purchased – they were able to purchase without a mortgage. So the whole mortgage thing missed us in great part, not only because the banking system here uh, followed the, right, the rules that had been written before. It, may, it mean that if you did need a, a mortgage here, you had to go through very much the same process you would have gone through 25 years ago or 30 years ago in the States, uh, and not what was happening 15 years ago. So that, uh, 
since they came down and with more money than they had anticipated, and housing at that stage was growing and becoming more expensive, but was still cheap, they were able to buy out completely, and they did not have a mortgage, and so no mortgage debt there to go wrong. Other than that, because of the conservative uh, nature of the banking system here, uh, there simply was not a lot of mortgages that, that did default on anybody's part. So the upshot of that global financial crisis is that because this country is extremely conservative in how it uses its own money, that's something you got to get used to if you're going to deal with Panama as a whole. And the simple fact of the matter is that uh, we did not have to spend a single penny of taxpayer money to bail out one single bank. No bank went under. Uh, monies were made by the government, were made available if it was an emergency, and the banking system said, no, there's no emergency, we don't need it. We don't have a central bank, so as a result, they weren't out lending money. Uh, and no corporation here received a single penny of taxpayers' money, because if they did need it, that's not what we do, but I don't remember any that actually did. So the impact of the uh, this global financial crisis that really brought the whole system globally into really a serious state, it was a very dangerous period, it was minimal. And we came through it quite well. We much reduced growth rate than in the past, a few years prior to that, but still <laughs> one of the highest, certainly in the Western Hemisphere, and higher than many, many and other nations in the world, too. So the answer to the question is when there is a crisis that comes around, and this was a debt-related one back in 2009, mortgage debt, then how does Panama go through, get through it? The answer is, well, in that one, very well, thank you, okay? Now, that's one item that comes up, but the second item is the, the broader one, and that is government debt, and the question being uh, too much government debt these days. Again, a long story, I'm not going into the details, but much of this came to a head, really, on several occasions in the 20th century, but in the 1990s, particularly in Southeast Asia and Russia and a few places like that. And the word started to come out from the advanced nations, you know, the rich ones, um, <laughs> that what these nations that were having problems were too deeply in debt and they should keep their debt level to 40% of their GDP, gross domestic product, which think of it in terms of the national income, all the money the country uh, earns in a year. Uh, their total government debt should not exceed 40% of that number. Because when it did, it started to cause problems. And if it ever got up to around 80, 90%, 90% particularly, then all hell could break loose. It would be a disaster. So you didn't want to have that happen. And this was actually adopted, this attitude, by a large number of countries, uh, especially those that have been affected in Asia, uh, out of necessity and because they, they were really frightened by what had happened and very, very seriously harmed by it. Well, it was also noticed in Panama. And indeed, in Panama, it's uh, legislated. <laughs> we have financial responsibility laws that were passed on the basis of this. And they state that the country should never spend more than 40 percent or take on debt. Its total debt should never exceed 40 percent of its total national income in a year. Uh, exactly what had been recommended, and we were to try to reduce the um, any deficit uh, on a, a yearly basis down to uh, zero eventually, but the, that's very unlikely to be met easily. But we were down to about 2 percent where we are now, which is substantially lower than a lot of European nations or the U.S. at the moment or a lot of other places. So uh, we, we kept we put on the, the very things that they had been recommending for nations, the emerging nations, to, to do in order to be financially responsible. Panama not only did them, they made it part of the law. Now, we have ex exceptions where we can go above that and so on, but the fact of the matter is, is on a quarterly basis, at least, sometimes more frequently, uh, the financial statistics come out and they show us coming close to that 40 percent level and there's a lot of unhappiness, and people really notice it. They actually talk about it. It's on the front pages of newspapers and so forth. This is not a good thing. If you follow local papers, you know what I'm talking about, if you read the financial news. Um, in addition, they're very touchy on the issue of deficits and how much uh, debt is taken on in a single year. And so far, 
we've been able to keep it around 2%. I say we because this is my home, you know, I'm <laughs> not a citizen, but it, it's home for me. And uh, I'm part and parcel of it, been here 15 years, so I use we frequently. But the, the important part is that Panama has, has tried to maintain these, and they have made it legislatively necessary. And what happens is that when we start to get to a level where we're going to exceed uh, what we're supposed to exceed, that what the legislation has set, then let's say it comes in the second quarter of the year. Well, in the third quarter, the government slows down spending or finds new income. It's got to be one or the other. So frequently, because it has to happen quickly, they put off a new project, starting it, for another three months or six months or whatever is necessary, uh, because they, if they continue, they're going to go over 40 percent, and they, and they don't want that. And it works. It, it is a problem sometimes because it is a rapidly growing country, and it's not unusual for such a country to take on additional debt when it's that growth period. But it doesn't make any difference. The problem is, well, Panamanians don't really trust politicians, for starters. But <laughs> too many countries, when they, when they lose the, the sense of control, just go too far and get themselves in very serious trouble. So Panama attempts to avoid this. Now, Panama is not alone, though. A lot of countries in the world over the last couple of decades have really taken this more seriously. So we have an image often in uh, the so-called advanced nations, the wealthier nations of Europe, uh, North America, and Asia, and everywhere else, that they are you know, much more responsible financially. And little countries like Panama are not responsible, and oh, they have to be kept a careful eye on and so forth. Well, the people of Franklin Templeton, it's a good mutual fund family. Uh, I mean, the numbers could be, have been put together by anybody, but they happen to provide uh, a graph showing over the years what has happened uh, to the, um, the debt uh, as to, that is, the percentage of debt to gross national product or gross domestic product in the advanced nations and also in the emerging nations. And that's what I'm going to show you here in a moment as soon as I can pick it up, and I will get it here. Here we go. Okay. Uh, you will see in 2001 it begins. The green line are the advanced nations. You probably are sitting in one of them right now. Uh, the blue line are the emerging nations, which include Panama. Uh, you will see that back in 2001, the advanced were around 70% of their GDP on the average for them as a group. Uh, was was debt, and it was about 55 percent for uh, the emerging nations. And in the year that followed, the emerging nations continued to rise. They both rose, but after that began to fall. And the uh, advance went up, and then it stabilized a bit, and then really started to go up again. And a lot of it came after 2009, or during that period, because of the financial crisis. Notice how the emerging nations did not increase their debt substantially after that financial crisis. They didn't need to. They were at the 40% level. Look at the guys up there in the green line. <laughs> they uh, really expanded their debt burden immensely. And this is what concerns a lot of people today. I want to make it clear who's the one in the debt. Now, as we that gold line, that indicates right now, this is to the end of 2017, uh, for which we have the statistics available. After that, it's pretty close to, no, we have close to the accurate numbers for 2018, but the rest is just a forecast. But as you can see, they have come up to uh, 110, and they had actually, up until recently, up close to 115% in these advanced countries. Meantime, the emerging markets have eventually begun to climb as well. They're at about 50%. In other words, the advanced nations are well over a double what the um, emerging nations are in terms of this critical percentage. That red star there, that's Panama today. And we've been at that level for a number of years now. We keep it below 40%. There we are. And you can compare us to other emerging nations, and then you can compare us to the advanced nations that uh, so many people think are so very financially responsible, <laughs> they, they, they do their best. I, you know, I'm not going to go on in that, but I, I do. it's not that the people aren't aware of this uh, in, in national economies. It's just that 
people, the, the general populations aren't, and they, they aren't really clear on this sort of stuff. And it's an extraordinarily difficult thing to do to, to, to pay off debt that you built without hurting people by reducing incomes and reducing expenditures and what have you. It's a tough deal, and they've gone so high. Now it's really tough for them to pass, to move downward. But they're, uh, we're not concerned with them. I mean, they live in their own world. They have uh, currencies that are dealt with differently and so forth. We don't. We have one of their currencies, the U.S. dollar here, which is fine. It worked out very well for us because of the way in which we handle it. Uh, but down here, in the emerging nations, you can see that they are really trying their best to, to exercise the discipline that the advanced nations demand of them. Uh, and Panama has stuck with the recommendations those advanced nations had made through uh, this, this whole period of the crisis and everything else. Um, that's basically what it boils down to. I, I need. I just wanted to share it with you, not because it's earth-shaking or whatever, and it's one factor in many and so on, but when we talk about many of these things, Panama has its problems, it has its challenges, its difficulties, but nonetheless, there are certain things in which it really excels. One of them is running the canal. They do that very, very good job of that. Another is, though, is dealing with this whole debt question. Uh, they're stingy in that sense. <laughs> Not really. They're, they're just very focused, and they're very serious, and they they keep each other keep each keep each other honest, so to speak. You know, any political party that starts moving up too high is going to get slammed by the others, and so on. So, in a, in a nutshell, I don't know what the future of the debt situation will be globally. I don't know what will happen to it down the road. It is a serious issue. I do read a great deal about it, but in, the focus, in terms of Panama, uh, I think we're in probably a better position to deal with any debt crisis coming down than most of the countries that you live in, possibly all of them. Uh, we are starting at a much lower level, and we have a, a sort of a tough-mindedness when it comes to these things. And that always surprises people somehow, but it is indeed a fact, and the numbers are right there, and it's very, very clear, and that's one reason why we are investment grade. Uh, begrudgingly, <laughs> the advanced nations say, oh, okay. They don't give credit often to smaller countries. Uh, I guess sometimes maybe they're a little embarrassed. I don't know, but whatever the case may be, uh, we've earned some respect in this regard, and I wanted to mention it, and uh, when the day comes that debt becomes a major global problem, that day comes, uh, I expect it will be a problem everywhere, and here included, but I'd much rather be here where we are at the bottom of this particular graph than to be where many of you are sitting today near the top of the graph. So perhaps that helps a little bit in explaining things. Thanks for stopping by. Um, next time I'm going to get back to Panama and Panama City more specifically, uh, and I look forward to doing that. Thank you again for coming.